What's up, YouTube? Your boy, JD, bringing another video here. Um, you know, the only time I do these kind of videos is when I find something that I'm just extremely excited about. And uh, this is something worth sharing with everybody so they can actually can see it uh, heads up. And just basically just the overview of it. But bam, it's the XUAV Mini Talon. Um, honestly, I done had this plane for over seven, eight months sit in the back room in the box brand new but i just kept putting it to the side because i didn't think i was going to have that much fun or that much success with this actual plane um because you know i had the the penguin going on we're doing formation flying with it and i jumped up and got the eve which is still it's that is a uh a mystery plane right there it's it's been a good one so far but the minutes island i mean just the different videos i've been seeing on it with people's good results has been just it's mind-blowing for such a small plane of this actual size so I went ahead and put it together and uh, have so far nothing but good running from this plane uh, nothing but success mind-blowing amps you know good cruise speed everything is just absolutely awesome but anyway we're gonna do just a quick overview of the plane how I got everything laid out um, Let's start with the front of it, of course. We got the uh, the propane on it. Uh, started using those a couple months ago. First one I bought was the version 1. Had it on the um, the Penguin. But when I bought it, I failed to look at any reviews on it. And didn't know that it didn't have the self-centered um, servo on it. So when it turns around, you have to manually stop it every single time. It never goes back to center on its own. So that was kind of a pain. It works if you get a plane flying smooth and stable, but for 30 extra more bucks or however much it is, it's worth getting one with a self center. So that's the main difference between the two, uh, Propane 1 and Propane 2. And uh, on Propane 2, I think you got a little bit more down degree angle on it as well. But I got it with a, um, I believe this is the HS11. 77 camera or HS. I might have it backwards. So I'll just paste it on the video what it actually is <laughs> But it's my typical uh, FPV camera that I use and I got the uh, Fox your legend v2 on this model and this camera is mind-blowing um, a lot better than version one on the legend um, Hands down the video is a lot crisper looks a whole lot better um, other than that, the typical setup, we're using uh, Dragon Link for the um, operation of the plane. And I have 5.8 for the video on it. Um, if you guys notice on the first couple of flights I did with this plane, I don't know if you pay attention to the DVR footage or not, but I had a couple of dropouts where Return to Home was kicking in at a very close range. And that was mainly, I'm thinking, was because I didn't have the actual antenna sticking all the way up. Like half of this antenna, well not half of it, but probably at least maybe a good inch to two inches of this wire was tucked in on the plane because I had this part of it. Uh, the base of the antenna was laying flat on the bottom side of the wing. So when I, well, what I went ahead and did on my last flight after I landed, I went ahead and just stuck it straight through and got the full link stinking up now. And hopefully that will solve my problem as far as range um, with that dude. And video-wise go, uh, I normally use the 1500-milliwatt uh, Boscom, but those are like crazy out of price right now. Not really sure why, maybe because more people's flying now. But I went ahead and bought the, um, there's a 2000-milliwatt um, video TX that I'm using in this model. Dirt, cheap, off of eBay, $33. The 1500 right now, you'll pay right at 89 to 100 bucks for it. So it was like, what's the point? <laughs> I mean, you're getting more milliamps, more power. So therefore, you know, that's, in my point of view, that's more range. But anyway, let's go around to the back of the plane. I'll show you how I got the 5.8 transmitter mounted off here and there and what's on the inside of it. Um, as far as the power plant go, as everybody know on YouTube or people that know me, JD ain't no follower. I don't use the same thing everybody uses. Everybody's using the Sunny Sky 2216 motor. And <laughs> it was just, I wasn't excited when I seen that. Luckily, I was able to see my buddy Will. He had a Minute Talent, which 
he unfortunately lost the air. But he's going to build another one. But he was using the same motor, the Grape Height, Sunny Sky 2216 motor. And on takeoff with the 5200 milliamp battery, that plane would barely would lunch. I mean, even when I launched it for him, I almost threw my arm out trying to get it to take off. So what I ended up doing was stepping up to the uh, NTM 3542 1250 KV motor, which is the same motor that I had on the X5. I used this motor on my Penguin, Penguin, uh, Fenwin Penguin as well too, and have had nothing but great success out of it. And instead of using an 8x6 prop, I did my research like I always did, and I seen a guy on YouTube that was actually using a 9x6 prop. And during his flight, it was like 4.4 amps versus everybody else's was like five or 5.6 so damn near six sounds so it was like what the gay why not just use a nine by six prop and lo and behold it's true put a nine by six prop on this plane and this plane will cruise at about 4.2 amps and i mean that's climbing good speed the speed is actually a little bit faster um i think it's about five kilometers faster versus with an eight by six prop so that was a pretty smart move that i made um, on the change up. The only thing I had to do different was the motor is so big is that the, a space that allowed for the wires to travel down into the shaft, I had to hull it out. And with the screws that go in it as well, I had to hold those out too. But you can find videos on YouTube where people have put bigger motors in this thing and what they had to do with it. I think I got some screenshots um, I might add to this video to where you can see how I actually put that off in there. Um, as far as servos, I'm using Hobby King 933 digital servos, four of them, two in the wings, two in the elevators, or in the VTEL setup of it. I know everybody's against using digital servos, saying it might cause interference with the UHF system or they twitch. My opinion, honestly, I haven't had any trouble out of them. Um, I use them on all of my planes, same servos, and they work great. They're solid, they're reliable. They're 12 gram servos, a little bit more beefier than a nine gram. So I had to end up cutting out the slots to be just a little bit bigger to make them fit, but they, they work out well. But anyway, uh, this is the, the GPS, of course, for the flight control that I'm using. And let me pop this hatch off and we show you how we got that worked up. And show the actual flight controller inside. And what I did as far as with the lid go of it, these are just extra servo horns that comes off in the pack of the servos and I took the screws that was meant to screw this down with of course you don't want to have to take a screwdriver and witch it back and forth on the flying field just to be able to get the hatch open wherever not so I took those servo horns and the screw got the screw really really hot and just slid it through to where it stuck so now all I gotta do is just spin this around and it comes out <laughs> pretty simple right so when I get my hatch off, I, I use the same screw as kind of as a, a lever and I just pull up on it. And I be real careful, of course, because this lid is fragile. It's like almost on a breaking point, but so far I haven't had any kind of breaking in it and my lid is not reinforced. But here's the inside of it. This is the um, 2000 milliwatt 5.8 video transmitter. It actually comes with a fan on it which in my case I didn't think that it needed a fan because this plane has some pretty great air holes in it some here and it's got one on the bottom side of it um, it's even got one here in the front so it's getting plenty of air on the inside of it and that's just something that's just making some extra RF noise potentially and eating up some extra juice where it's not needed so I took the fan of it off and no overheat issues with that guy but on the inside as you can see it is a mess <laughs> Um, why is it a mess? Well, I don't really get off into building planes for real. I like to fly them. So I just do whatever it takes to get it going. And that's my results. A mess. <laughs> but it works though. Um, here's a power match. I'm using the FY41 AP light flight controller. My choice. You know, pain free. Everything's preset for you that needs to be preset. <clears throat> no worrying about return to home, hike, set in that crap, none of that. Because what the plane's gonna do, if fail safe kicks in, or if you hit return to home, it's gonna keep its current height. And it's gonna fly itself back based off of that height and based at the desired speed you put in it. 
So the only thing you really have to worry about when you first initially set up this flight controller is getting the correct speed off in it, which is typically, I think, comes default set at like 56 to 57 kilometers per hour, which for most planes, that's either going to be too fast or it's going to be just fast enough to bring the plane back safe. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's a dummy proof flight controller for the most part. And that's why I like it. And it costs a whole lot cheaper than a vector and you get everything and so even comes with the airspeed sensor on it so you can't lose but anyway flight controller power manager is powering the flight controller and is also powering the video transmitter and it also powers the fpv camera in the front i have the dragonlink micro receiver and i just have it uh velcro double side tape here to the side easy to get to for updates or anything and somewhere in the mess of all these wires <laughs> there's a actual five volt back and here it go i learned my lesson with this with the eve um you better all put in a five volt back to run out the servos and everything with it just you know it just works out a whole lot better than basing your esc to work all this stuff and this might be overworking or whatever it just eliminates the problem by having a 5 volt back separate to power the servos and everything. I just like the way it works out. And in the back of this plane, which I know you can't see because of all the wires, there's a uh, Turnergy, Turnergy Trust 45 amp ESC. Um, plenty of power. This plane don't take off. Max amps is around 40. Uh, 45 amp, that's a 5 amp cushion. Which of course, you know, as soon as I go full throttle on takeoff, within the next five to ten seconds, I'm I'm dialing back down to that four or five amp cruise speed flight. So, but that's pretty much it. That's the take on it, on the inside of it, and how I get everything wired up. And the plane is awesome. I mean, it's it's perfect. I fly with the um, eight thousand packs, ten uh, C multi star batteries. Slide them all the way up in the nose. That little line there, if you can see it, that marks the CG. Uh, the plane is very happy with that. It's still got space to slide the battery back if I want to, or I can slide the battery more front if I want to. And the plane with this power setup, the NTM motor, 45 amp ESC, even with this heavy painted tilt on it, flies perfectly flying. I mean, you can just barely toss it, and this plane jumps out your hand. So you can't really go wrong with this kind of setup. But this is just, a, like I said, a quick overview of the plane. Uh, if there's anything that I missed, any questions anybody has, um, just shoot me a comment. And one thing for sure that I did do a little bit different than everybody else, I do not like using the stock um, servo horns or connectors that they sent. The kind that they sent it is the kind that just kind of just stick in there high glue in place. I like the ones with the screws in it. So what I did, I, you know, of course I got tons of planes and planes that I had in the past. So I have these laying around with the screws off in them. I went ahead and swapped those out with those, but I am using the standard hardware for the linkage, the little screw and the bolt type deal. But what I did was just put a ton of uh, high glue over top of it to make sure that that screw would not come undone. And, you know, as I said, so far so good. I mean, it's been, it's been a blessing in the skies one of my favorite planes now and uh, for the landing part of it I'm still using the actual wheel that comes with the kit in the front um, it works well it serves a purpose it is fragile <laughs> you don't want to land too hard because you will break it and I actually broken that wheel already as far as the um, it's got like a little hub cap if you will on the side of it, it actually broke it all, but it still works fine. And back in the back, I still got the wooden skid that comes with the plane, but what I did was I laced it with a, a really thick zip tie to go down the leading edge of it. That way when it scrapes the ground, it's got something to rub on it, not the actual wood itself. Because, you know, I didn't want to put the little skid like you see some people do in the front. They put the skid in the back. I wanted to keep it as simple and light as possible. And it works out right, great. And I use Gorilla Tape to wrap everything up and it's hot glued in place. So it's not coming off in flight. It's not acting like a rudder or, or nothing like that. Um, pretty awesome plane. 
And uh, one question to address, somebody asked about the propane being in the front saying that because it was sitting up so high, they was wondering if it acted like a rudder during flight. And to answer that, it does not. Um, to be honest, I don't know if it's just the FY41 AP light, the flight controller, doing such a good job at compensating when I do turn from left to right. But when I move this pan and tilt system around, the plane stays straight the whole entire time. Um, the only time I notice a difference is when I look down. Whenever I look down, the camera tends to want to kind of go up a little bit, which in my opinion, that's a plus, but it's not like a crazy up, you know, it's like a slow gradually up whenever you tilt the camera down. But far as left and right go, it doesn't act like a rudder in the front. But anyway, that wraps up my review. Overlook my plane, the way I got it set up. Hope you guys like it. Um, long range flight coming soon. Maybe this weekend, depending on the weather or not. 21 mile round trip flight should be pretty awesome. Look me up. Holla at your boy. Peace.